prayer is effective if it fulfills the objective of bringing us closer to God's will. Prayer makes sense when it brings us closer to His presence each day, allowing us to be sensitive to God's voice, to follow its guidance and its instructions, because we cannot do it alone, nor should we. Welcome to this devotional Mara, where we get up to listen to God's voice and obey it. Today is Friday, Friday of prayer in Mana, a day to raise our hands, to incline our hearts, to bend our knees. Today, I would like for us to read and to pray according to what is written in Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Thank you, Lord, because the Bible says that you have all the power to examine me, to know me. The Bible says that you know my sitting down and my rising up and that you have understood my thoughts from afar, what means that nothing about me is unknown to you. As you pray this prayer, I want to tell you that this verse 13 of Psalm 139 says that the Lord formed my inward parts and that he knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. When the psalmist talks about God's design, he says that God created us before the creation of the world. As you pray this prayer, think about this. You were planned and designed. As you pray this prayer, think about this. The day you were born, all that was already written was checked off. And when you were born, God made sure that everything that was written was fulfilled. Welcome. You are a son, a daughter of God. You were in the mind and the heart of God. And God knows your entire being. When God asks you, where are you? When God asks you, what are you doing there? When God asks you, where is your brother? It's not because God does not know your situation or your condition. It is because truly God wants you to go to the depths of your being and to live as a true son, a true daughter of God. This morning, this first Friday of the year 2024, I would like for you to say to the Lord, God, I do not want to live a life adrift, nor do I want to be lost. If you truly made me, if you created me with a purpose, I truly want to live to fulfill that purpose. Say, Lord, each day I want to get up to ask you to guide me and to teach me the path that I should follow. I want to get up each morning and allow your word to make me wise and understanding, to make the decisions I need to make and to reach what I need to reach, to achieve the things I need to achieve. Today I want to ask the Holy Spirit that in this new year it be He who guides me, because the Bible says that all who are guided by the Spirit of God, these are God's children. And in this, I want to give testimony that I am a child of God because I allow myself to be guided by the Holy Spirit, because I allow God's Spirit in the morning to awake me, to pray, to read the Bible, to take my spiritual nourishment, because I want to be sensitive when God's Spirit speaks to me. And even if it is difficult, even if it is not easy for me, I will obey. My goal this year, 2024, is to listen to your word and to tremble before it. It is to listen to your word and be fearful. It is to listen to your word and make the effort to obey. Because today, more than ever, I understand that blessing is at a single step away and this is called obedience. That blessing for my life is just a step away when I learn to obey to close my eyes and stop being so rational, so human, and instead be more spiritual. Thank you, Lord, because this year I make my heart willing to listen to God, to listen to His Holy Spirit, to listen to God's Word, to put it into practice, to obey it every day of my life. This 2024, I make myself available, willing to live a spiritual life. I no longer want to live in the flesh nor in my personal efforts because I always end up losing that battle, because I always end up giving up in that battle. 
and I cannot gain absolutely any ground for myself. But if I seek you, and I seek you wholeheartedly, and I kneel knowing that you are who gives me strength, that you give me the ability, that you teach me to obey, that you are who gives me strength in my weakness, then I shall know that it is this spiritual life that will give me the victory over the circumstances at every moment of my life. Thank you, Lord. I commit in my heart in this year, 2024, to be a person willing in my heart to understand God's ways. Father, we do not want this prayer to just be a promise, but instead to be a true resolution in our heart. And we are here. We are all gathered together this Friday morning to pray, to speak with you, to open our hearts to you and express our desires, our wishes, and to say to you, Lord, that this is what we want to happen this year. Lord, I pray for each listener of Mana. I know that many are beginning the year with many expectations and truly want changes, wanting to see miracles in their lives, in their families, in their finances, and in many areas of their lives. And I know that this will take place, and but it won't take place just because you will do something. Because the ball has always been on our court, and we are the ones who must make the decisions. Today, more than ever, we should understand that why do we ask God for blessing if we are already blessed with all blessings? Why do we ask the Lord for prosperity if the Lord has already made us prosperous? Because He is in us. In other words, there are many things that are already ours, and we do not need to ask for them. The reason we ask for them is because we do not understand them. Because truly, our lack of spiritual wisdom is what sometimes causes us to lose the inherited blessings that have already been given to us since Christ died on the cross. Today, I declare the glory of Christ over every listener of Mana, the victory of Christ over all those areas where we are still enslaved, where we are weak, we are impulsive, foolish, and act in the flesh. I pray for each listener of Mana so that the power of the Most High and the Holy Spirit makes you strong in your weakness, and that this year truly be a year where they bend their knees, raise their hands, and incline their hearts. I pray so that each person who listens to this devotional makes the decision in their hearts to live a spiritual life, a life that firstly seeks God's kingdom and its justice, and the rest will come as an addition, a life consecrated to the Lord and to His Word. Today, I pray so that each listener of Mana makes the decision to watch less television, to be less on social media, to spend less time thinking about themselves, about their weaknesses, about their problems, and more time in God's presence, more time to be in God's home, more time to affirm their minds and their thoughts on God's word, more time to remain on their knees and have a culture of communion with God, approaching Him day after day to express to Him who we are and what we do. My prayer for each listener of Mana is that your word, your word, makes us truly wise and understanding people in our daily living because the mistakes that we make day after day are because we do not use the Bible as our source of wisdom. We do not use God's word to help us make the best decisions in our lives, but I know that God will also help us take this step so that we are wiser in the light of your word, so that we may consult the Bible more each day, so that whenever we make decisions, we first kneel to ask the Lord for his direction. And here is where we will see great changes in our lives. I pray for each listener of Mana, for the families of each listeners of Mana, so that there be a culture of seeking God, of meeting together, gathering as a family, of seeking the Lord, of praying together, reading the Bible together, praying and seeking the Lord together. I pray for all the marriages of Mana, and in the same way, I pray that they spend more time together praying, consulting the Bible, taking notes, spending spiritual times where they seek God, and instead of looking at one another and their defects, they look at God, the God who created them, who made them and who has a purpose for them, for their lives. Lord, allow us to prevail financially. This year, 2024, 
allow us to see many of the plans and projects related to our finances made a reality. We pray that you remove the obstacles and this year truly be a year of new beginnings, new goals, new purposes, and that you open doors, that you open the windows of heaven to pour out blessing that overflows in the financial area of our lives. Lord, thank you, because this year, 2024, will be a year of peace and mental health and emotional health. This year will be a year of spiritual decisions and not decisions in the flesh or decisions based on emotions. This year will be a year where we live as a family, where together we share God's word. This will be a spiritual year, a year where we seek God and his word. We consecrate this year, 2024, so that our lives are truly dedicated to the Lord, committed to the Lord, so that each day we may grow in this path of faith and in the knowledge of God and his word. Today, I bless your life. I bless your home. I bless your family. I bless your health and I bless your work and the work of your hands. I pray to God for your children and the children of your children. I pray to God for all the spouses, for the elders, for those who are single, for the adolescents and our youth. And I ask God that his coverage be over the lives of each one of them so that they may experience God's favor, guiding them and showing them the path to follow. Father, we are in your hands. And for this reason, we commend to you our lives. We commend our daily walk. Go in front of us. Guard us from evil and from the evil one. Cover us with your blood and keep us from evil. Anoint our heads with oil and each day allow us to experience the renewal and the power of the Most High over our lives. Thank you for those who have had birthdays this week. I bless you. I bless a new year for your lives. And I pray so God's presence backs you up in all that you do and all that you begin. May God shepherd you and guide your lives and your hearts so that each day the Lord may show you his will. Father, a prayer for this ministry of Mana. We begin this year with many expectations. We will see miracles. The word will continue to be preached with power filled with the Holy Spirit. Your word will be there day after day as fresh nourishment reaching each heart, each life. Lord, we pray for new listeners of our devotional. We pray that this message reaches more lives, more hearts, and continues to bring spiritual nourishment to all those in need. Make this ministry a ministry of blessing, a ministry of spiritual health, a ministry of support for others, a ministry of restoration. Make this ministry of mana a ministry that supplies God's word, reaching the most remote places in the world, bringing fresh spiritual mana to the lives of each person. Provide us with the means, the resources, the equipment, the people that we need this year. And we ask that you go in front of us, teaching us each day to carry out your will. We commend ourselves to you and we thank you for being able to count on you and in the, the direction of your Holy Spirit, knowing that no one or anything can separate us from God's love. We praise and bless you in Christ Jesus. How many give glory to God for this morning, for this time of prayer? Okay, and I want to remind you that in this month of January, we will be fasting for seven days, beginning Monday, January 29th until Sunday, February 3rd, where we will wrap up with our Feast of First Fruits. And so get ready, get mentally prepared, pray, and next week I will give you the details of all that we will do. I wait for you next week. Blessings to all.